Today we're examining the Pertronix igniter electronic ignition conversion that was done to this Chrysler Prestolite dual point distributor. This is done by a lot of guys in order to eliminate the maintenance that's periodically required with breaker points and also to get a consistent and clean spark. The Pertronix igniter system consists of only two components. It's very simple. There's the igniter module and a magnet sleeve. There's only two wires, a red and a black. And it's completely contained within the distributor, under the distributor cap, so there's no external module and that leaves a more stock appearance to the vehicle. Now let's take a look at the way this distributor was originally configured. We can see it's a dual breaker point distributor, the points here and here, and then a condenser or capacitor down here. Those components were eliminated by the installation of the Pertronix unit. Now let's talk about what some of the installation and operational challenges can be with this type of conversion. 90% of the problems that occur with these units are actually installated, installation related and potentially user error. The first one is you have a bad ground. It's essential that the ground between where this module mounts on the breaker plate and the distributor body is good ground. Well, you test that is you use an ohmmeter, you put one lead here on the aluminum breaker plate that's connected, or the aluminum uh, plate on the igniter module that's connected to the breaker plate and the distributor. You put one lead here, put your other lead on the negative terminal on the battery, and you want to make sure that you are very, very close to 0, 0.0 ohms to ensure a good ground and make sure to subtract the internal resistance of the test leads of your ohmmeter which can be maybe 0 0.2 ohms. That actually is significant in this case because Pertronix says you do not want more than 0 0.2 ohms resistance between this breaker plate and the negative terminal on the battery. If you do you have a bad ground you may have operational problems with the unit. So you want to get as close to 0, 0.0 ohms as possible. The second issue is low voltage. These units like full 12 volt battery voltage. Well, it'll be like 12 to 14 volts when the car's running. They are tolerant of a fairly wide range of voltage, but you may have issues. So let's take a look at this. There's only two wires, a red and a black. Black wire goes, goes to the negative terminal on the coil. Very straightforward. Red wire you can connect it to the positive terminal on the coil. Here's the issue. With Chryslers of this era, they use a ballast resistor. The purpose of that is to lower the voltage to the coil to prolong its life and to prolong the life of the breaker points that used to be in this distributor. Well, the igniter likes a full 12 volt voltage. If you hook that red wire from the igniter directly to coil positive with a ballast resistor in the circuit, you're gonna have much lower voltage when the car is running. It may work okay with that, but then again it may not, particularly with one of our generator equipped cars like the 300E, 300F. You got the headlights on at night, you come to a stop, engine could die because the voltage goes too low. That's a problem. How do we fix it? Very simple. The best way, and for stock appearance, leave the ballast resistor in the circuit, leave the uh, wire from the wiring harness connected to coil positive from the ballast resistor that helps protect the stock coil. But the red wire from the igniter, what you want to do is run a wire from the 12 volt side of the ballast resistor to this red wire on the igniter. That way you get full battery voltage going to the module. You're still protecting your ignition coil. The other thing you could probably do would be to use an aftermarket ignition coil that is rated to handle the full 12 volts. Then you could bypass the valve resistor and hook this red wire directly to coil positive. Your choice, either will work. Bottom line is make sure you're getting full battery voltage to that igniter module. Those are the two issues that cause most of the problems, and those are inst installation related issues. Well, what does Protronics not tell you? There's a few things that can happen that will screw this all up. Well, let's talk about that. 
first one is, let's take a look again here, module magnet sleeve. Notice there's an air gap between those two components. Now, Pertronics does not specify an air gap measurement. They tell you just install that igniter module on the breaker plate, put the magnet sleeve on the uh, points cam on the distributor shaft, you're good to go. I will tell you from experience, at least with two Chrysler Presto Light distributors, it ain't going to work. Why? The gap's going to be too big. I had to modify the mounting hole on the igniter base plate, I think by about a 32nd of an inch. That was to reduce the air gap between the magnet sleeve and the module in order to get this to work and get spark. Now, this is not like a uh, Mopar Performance electronic ignition where that, that uses a reluctor wheel here and a magnetic pickup and that air gap is critical. That can only be like 0 .008 inches. This one is much larger in comparison and the actual gap's not critical, it just has to be close enough to that magnet sleeve to fire. The other thing that you need to know is this magnet sleeve, I will tell you this, this magnet sleeve needs to be fully seated down on the points cam. However, you need to make sure that it actually lines up well with the igniter module. You need, obviously, you need a distributor in good shape. If it doesn't line up well, you're not going to get spark. If you move the magnet sleeve up slightly on the points cam to get it to line up better, you might get spark, but what's wrong with that? Well, that means your distributor rotor is not going to fully seat on the distributor shaft. You run, then run the risk of that rotor well, not being secure, you're going to get rotor phasing problems. The other thing is that rotor may sit up too high and physically contact the, the contacts on the inside of the distributor cap. That's no good. You don't want that. That's going to wear out your cap and rotor real fast, and that could damage the bearings in the distributor. No bueno. So, make sure this sleeve is fully seated, but also make sure it lines up well with the igniter module and that you actually have spark. You can bench test these and that's the best thing to do. I don't have time to go into that. You can look it up on the internet, bench test it, take the distributor out of the engine, install it on the bench, bench test it first to make sure it's working properly, and then reinstall it. You can actually install these while the distributor's in the car, particularly on a big block Mopar because the distributor's right up in the front of the engine, easy access. But then you'll have to test it using a timing light on one of the plug wires while cranking the engine. You can do that. Your choice, do it on the bench, do it in the car, doesn't make any difference. But those are other issues that are important. Here's another issue they don't tell you about with these Chrysler Prestor Light distributors. Let's take another look where the original components were. Okay, we, we've got distributor points here, here, condenser down here. Where's the igniter module? Well, it's down here. The, the points were here and here. This is in a different location. We don't have a whole lot of choice about where to place that, but here's what happens. It's going to change your timing a little bit. So let's say you installed this with the distributor in the vehicle. You didn't pull the distributor, you didn't change the timing, you go to start it, and, well, and you tested it for spark, it's got spark, great. You're ready to go. Not so fast. You go to start it, it the timing may be far enough off that the car won't start. In fact, it may be so far off that you're going to get a bad backfire, blow a hole in the muffler, wake up the neighbors, they're going to call the cops, that's no bueno. And you're going to be stumped and wanting to call the distributor repairman to come repair your distributor. Well, here's the problem. This will alter the timing. It retards the timing. You need to advance the distributor, and on a Chrysler that means move it clockwise, when you're standing on the passenger side of the car facing the distributor, move it to the right, clockwise. Advance the timing, and on this particular one, it threw the timing way off. I mean, I'm talking like 40 degrees, I don't remember. It was quite a bit. So, you need to change the timing at least far enough so that the car will start, and then you can time the engine. Now, in the case of these Prestolite distributors, these can vacuum canisters, they're pretty big, they're kind of off, off this way at this angle compared to a single points distributor they're kind of more pointing this way. Anyhow, it threw the timing off so far on this car that 
I had this canister was actually starting to bump into the upper radiator hose, so I had to move all the spark plug wires over one tower and then reposition the distributor so that it was properly located in the engine. That's okay, you can do that. Just get the timing right or roughly correct, then start the car. Here's something else to think about. Where's the heat sink on this thing? You don't have a lot of heat sink. There's not a lot of, the module's small, it's got to fit in the distributor, not a lot of room. Essentially uses the breaker plate as a heat sink. That's not like a traditional Mopar electronic ignition has an external ECU with a huge heat sink. That's just a weak link in these systems. And heat can damage this thing over time. This thing's going to get hot. Engine gets hot, distributor gets hot. These things can fail from heat over time. I think this particular one's been in 11 years. I think it's, it didn't fail suddenly. I think it's starting to fail from heat-related issues. Just something to be aware of. The other issue, voltage spikes can occur. Electronics don't like voltage spikes. And so what you want to do is make sure you've got an alternator that's in good condition or generator. You want to make sure you've got a, uh, a good voltage regulator that's properly operating and a battery that, that's fully charged and that you maintain that charge. Uh, these do not like excessive voltage either. They're voltage tolerant, but too low, too high is no good. Make sure your voltage regulator is working correctly. One thing you can do, I don't know how much it would help, these cars, if they had a radio, they originally had a radio suppression capacitor that was connected between coil positive and ground. That might help filter voltage sp spikes, I'm not sure, but you know, the car really should have that on it anyway, and you could, I'd recommend using those. Finally, one minor thing is kind of a technicality. A lot of guys think that you get stronger spark with these electronic ignition modules. Technically, you do not. It's technically weaker spark than with breaker points. You don't, you will not, you'll make more power with breaker points if they're installed correctly. Why is that? Well, this is an electronic switch. When this thing switches on, you, it adds resistance that's in series with the coil. You get a voltage drop, and my understanding is about one volt. Technically, you're going to get weaker spark because of that. I'm pretty sure this is a Darlington switch. If it was a FET, field effect transistor, that voltage drop would be fairly negligible and your spark would be comparable. Uh, I don't think it is. This is an igniter one. The igniter two and three might, might have FETs. Not a big deal, just something to know and dispel that myth about stronger spark. You do get, it switches cleaner. It's an electronic switch. See, it switches cleaner than breaker points. It is not a stronger spark. Okay, there we go. Let's wrap it up. Those are the issues and challenges you need to be concerned about and aware of.